Hey y'all, Taylor Nada here. Uh, today I want to talk to you a little bit about gig bags and all the different options that exist as well as the few that I have in my collection. Um, have you ever been just like overwhelmed by the amount of gig bags and guitar cases are out there? Maybe you got a new guitar, maybe you built you a new parts caster and you want a, a new case for it and you don't really know which one's going to be best for your needs. Well, as you can see here, I've kind of spanned the gamut. I got the Mono M80 over there, I've got the Reunion Blues RBX, I've got the Reunion Blues Continental, and i got the Gibson Deluxe gig bag made out of kind of like a pleather. And then i got your classic Fender gig bag that comes with a, some of your like Mexican made tellies and strats. And uh, that thing's garbage. I mean, if you can do this to it, just imagine what a airport employee who is unhappy with his life is going to do to it when he does this with your guitar. It ain't going to be good, <clears throat> right? So you want something better than that, something stiffer, something more padded, something more protective, but also with some good features like good storage space and what have you. So let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of some of these other cases, starting with the Mono M80. So Mono has been around forever. They make really good bags. Quality is awesome. I mean, I really don't even have enough good things to say about the mono cases. They are expensive though. I mean, that bag right there is like 350 bucks, but that's a cool case because it's a dual guitar case. It holds the acoustic dreadnought and an electric guitar. So when I'm going on a trip somewhere and I just want to bring one bag, uh, that's a great case to do it. If I have a, if I'm going on a trip where I'm playing solo acoustic shows and band shows where I need an electric guitar, all on one trip and I want to bring an electric and an acoustic, I mean, you can't beat that. And it's got some really big ample pockets with little dividers and organizers in it and the bag's built tough as nails, it's very protective. I think it could support, uh, well, it could survive being thrown by an angry airport employee, probably. Uh, and then all, there's also this cool feature, it's an extra accessory called the tick, which, just like a pesky tick in real life, attaches to the bag by way of these little velcro straps and you can set like a micro pedal board or whatever your in-ears strap you know whatever i've got my in-ears and a fly rig pedal board and stuff like that in here it's just got these three little velcro straps that attach to these three rings on the mono case and uh I'll open this guy up so you can kind of see what the inside looks like. The padding is very thick, very dense. It's good stuff. It's got these two scratch pads that protect the case from the, you know, any sharp string ends or whatever you might have. String ends here at the headstock. Got this handy little strap here with a little pocket you can put picks in. And uh, plenty of brake angle space to support like a Gibson Les Paul style, or you know, in this case, Gibson Dreadnought style headstock. Uh, got this, a pretty good sized pocket right here to carry strings and picks and pens and business cards, capos, whatever. Down here you got a really quite spacious pocket. It's got a, a little hanging divider in it, a clip to hang your cables. Uh, you can put all kind of stuff in here. If you had a gig on top of Mount Everest or something and you needed to bring two guitars and enough survival gear and food rations to survive for a week, this is uh, probably the one that you want to have. Um, but it's a thick beast of a case. Well, let's set that up. So it's not the funnest one to carry around. Um, especially when you add the extra thickness of the tick to it. I mean, I don't know if you can see from there, but that really protrudes a good ways. So that's something to, to think about. Um, Another cool thing, what I do with it, and uh, I know what some other people do with it, I just recently went on a trip where I really didn't want to bring a lot of stuff. I had a fly date in Oklahoma, and I brought this one case. I put my electric guitar in the electric compartment in the back, which is right here. And uh, now this one's a top loader compartment, so you can't open it all the way. But you can slide your guitar in and out of it that way, kind of like the mono vertigo. Um, but anyway, on that trip, I put my electric guitar in here, 
And then in the front compartment, I put all my clothes in there. So this one bag is all I took with me to Oklahoma. I had everything I needed for the whole weekend in this one bag. I didn't bring any other luggage on the plane. So that's a pretty cool, pretty cool feature. Something that you can't do with every guitar case on earth. Something to think about. This one here is the double guitar case by RBX. I'll just bring it closer to the camera so you can see that. It's made out of a nice uh, waterproof kind of ballistic nylon material. It's got a really good comfy carrying handle. And it's, as you can see, it's, it holds two guitars, but it's really not a thick, chunky case. Not really. It's like the same width as this Reunion Blues Continental that only holds one guitar. Um, the padding is decent, certainly not as protective as this one or this one. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but I'll show you. That's kind of thin there. That's really not very thick. It's stiff. It's got, it doesn't have a lot of play in it. And when you zip it up and close it, it's really not a very crushable case. The sidewalls are considerably thick and whatever this material in, it doesn't, is, it don't, it don't cave easy. And uh, you can see this stuff here. While it's not as thick as the mono or that, uh, the mono M80 or that Reunion Blues Continental, it's still certainly thick enough. I don't know if you can see that. It's thick. It's thick enough to provide pretty good protection. And uh, this guitar also has a pretty gnarly pocket. This guitar, this guitar case, I mean. Pretty big pocket with some dividers. Got a little clip here. A little, little latch to hang your cables and whatnot. Pretty ample space. You don't have any other pockets but that one, but it's a pretty good one. And like I said, this guitar, this case holds two guitars, and uh, both compartments are pretty snug for a Stratocaster style guitar. You don't feel like it's the guitar don't seem to be moving around too much in there. But it's such a lightweight, compact case for having two guitars in it. Really convenient. This one seems to be the Mac Daddy of them all when it comes to protection. It is tough stuff. It is thick, it is really quite padded, and uh, once again, it's got that really comfy kind of handle that that other one's got. And uh, man, the padding in here is just really something else. I mean, I don't know if you can see that, but boy. It's some nice, thick, squishy foam. And it's got a really nice, thick block in here for the headstock to lay on. Lots of space behind it. You could absolutely put a, uh, a guitar with an angled headstock like a Les Paul in here and not really have to worry about it. And I know they make a specific Les Paul model of these that fits a Les Paul like a glove. So that's something to be thinking about. I think as far as toughness goes, this is the toughest of them all. You could really, if you had to, if you were forced to gate check it or whatever, because there wasn't enough overhead cab, overhead bin space, this would be the, the one most likely to survive anything that a, a airplane loader could do to it. And then this one here, this is the Gibson Deluxe gig bag that comes with like the, the, uh, the Gibson Les Paul tributes. And it's a great case. I think they're like 150 bucks. But man, it's very padded, very tough, pretty thick padding on the lid, thick padding on the sidewalls. It's a great gig bag and for a great price. Um, the downside to it is that the pocket is just kind of what I would say medium sized and it doesn't have any kind of dividers in it whatsoever. So it's just a big gaping hole that you can just kind of stuff a strap and some picks and some cables or whatever but there's no way to keep it all separate it's just all in here and you got to go fishing around for what you want and that's kind of annoying to me um but it's pretty slim very stiff very protective i've flown with it a few times had no problems fitting it into an overhead bin this this case particularly doesn't give flight attendants a heart attack when you show up with it like that mono m80 that double bag it seems like it's designed specifically just to this flight attendants off right as soon as they see you walk onto a plane they're mean mugging you and they're like that's not gonna fit 
and, and so far I haven't had to gate check it. Believe it or not, I have been able to get that thick bag into an overhead bin on every plane I've been on with it so far. Uh, and it's been close a couple times. On one flight I had to get one of the flight attendants to help me move stuff around in a couple overhead bins, move other people's bags and whatnot to make that fit in there because I just really don't trust them to gate check things. Even though that's a great bag and it could probably survive it, I just don't want to risk my gear being broken or lost or whatever, especially when I'm going somewhere to play a gig and I need that equipment to go make money, make a living where I'm playing at with it. So uh, I'm super leery about letting anybody gate check any of my cases. Um, one other thing to talk about is some added features. So this case, as you can see, has these little clips here where you can you can detach the straps and stuff them in this pocket. That's kind of nice. Sometimes you want to carry it like this and not have your cables dangling. I like that. And it's got this little subway handle. I don't, I'm kind of suspicious that this case was designed by Reunion Blues. If it wasn't, Gibson certainly took notes from Reunion Blues playbook because that's a Reunion Blues feature, this little subway handle and the way these uh, straps pack into a pocket like if you look at the reunion blues rbx oxford bag it's exactly like that um, but that's a pretty cool feature one that the mono does not have as you can see the mono just got these straps hanging out there ain't nothing you can do about it and they are good quality straps they're pretty pretty tough stuff. I think that you could use this case for 10 or 12 years and probably not even have any of this material start to fray on you. It is tough, tough stuff. But man, look how big this bag is. And when you put it on your back, it's heavy too. Put that in mind. Let's load it down with two guitars and some other stuff, especially if you load that tick up. I mean, it's a big bag, you know, but it's a good one. All right. So that one don't have a place to tuck your straps. And neither does this one. And I will say on the RBX, the straps aren't as tough. I feel like if you probably had this for five or six years and you're gigging with it three or four days a week every day, you're probably gonna get some fraying around the edge of these straps. I don't know that for sure, maybe not, but it just seems like they would start to wear out on you. They're not, they don't feel as tough as those mono straps, but I mean, that mono is a $350 bag. This is only like a $150 bag or something like that. Um, well, no, I take that back. This is a $230 bag, $229 for the double. I got it cheaper than that on eBay. Lucked out. Got a good deal on it. But still, I think for the money, it's a super good bag, all things considered. This one does have a way to hide your straps. So you can unclip it just like the Gibson. And then it's got this zipper right here in the middle. And you can just stuff these straps right in here, like so. And just oops, zip it on up. And then you got this tidy little bag you can carry around with no straps hanging out. I really like that feature myself. Um, and you got this subway handle, which comes in handier than you think. Like when you're on a plane, you, know, you go to a big airport like Denver or, or Atlanta, where sometimes you gotta get off one plane and get on their little, little train and go to your next one and you're stuck on there with a whole bunch of people. It's kind of nice to just be able to carry it like this and just go. Or when you're walking through the aisle on a plane, you know, this is more convenient than trying to carry it like this or whatever else going to be hitting people. Um, I think this is a really well thought out bag. The people at Reunion Blues did a great job. Oh, and you've also got this little neat pocket back here. And I'm not sure what they intended it for. It's not a very big pocket. It's pretty narrow, but it's long, as you can see. And you could fit guitar strings, a few packs of strings in there, capos, 
some things like that, but it's not a big pocket and it doesn't balloon out. So you really can't put anything thick in there. You certainly couldn't fit like pedals or anything like that in there. But you could fit pedals in here, this big case. You could definitely fit strings and whatnot in this case, which is what I use it for. I currently don't use this case, this, this pocket in the back for, for anything as of yet, but I could. I'm just not sure what to put in there. Um, I don't know. All in all, I think this is probably the Cadillac of the cases. It's very nice. It's very well built. I think it aesthetically looks the nicest. It feels the most comfortable on your back, too, I will say. This area here is very padded, real squishy, and it sits in your back in a very, in a very comfortable way. But it also sits the highest on your back. I'm 6'1", and when I wear this on my back, it barely makes it underneath the door. If I put on a pair of cowboy boots, it'll graze the top of the door. Uh, so if you're a taller guy than me, wearing cowboy boots, you're probably gonna have to duck down to come through a door frame with it. Uh, so take that into consideration. The RBX, they seem to have designed to ride a little lower. And it too has the subway handle built into it, which is a, a cool thing. But yeah, the, you look how high up these straps attach compared to the old Continental. The Continental straps attach down here, the RBX attaches up here. So this one rides considerably lower. Like the, the top of the backpack is about level with my head when I put that bag on. And same with the, the Mono. Even, you know, look how high up these straps attach. This one rides really low. So you never really have to duck down or even worry that you might have to duck down you know, whenever you're, you're carrying it. So that's something to think about. But I do find that because of how low it is, it, it's more awkward to walk with. Because this whole case is just kind of like resting against your butt and the back of your legs when you're, when you're walking along. And that's kind of, kind of awkward, especially considering how big and heavy the case is. So these are all things you don't think about when you're buying a case, especially if you haven't had the opportunity to put your hands on them yourself. Uh, if you if you live in a place that doesn't have a store that carries all these, like I don't, we got a guitar center in Baton Rouge, which is where I bought this Gibson case, and I got a really good deal on that. Those are normally $150, and uh, I went in there one day and they had it with a tag for 60 bucks, so I'm like, well, I'll take it. And it's been a great case, and it fits a telly perfectly, so I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I bought that RBX double gig bag because. Sometimes I want to take two electric guitars somewhere and I don't want to stick an electric guitar in the front of that mono acoustic electric bag and have to pad stuff around it to keep it from bouncing. Um, and sometimes I have gigs where I just want to bring two guitars locally, not even travel gigs, but it's just, it's convenient to be able to grab one bag and have two guitars in it. And not You got more hands free to carry other stuff that way. So lately I've been using that RBX double electric bag more than any of these just because of the sheer convenience of it. Um, but if I'm ever flying somewhere and I only want to bring one guitar and I want to protect that guitar to the utmost, I'm definitely bringing the Reunion Blues Continental because that sucker is tough. And they make a new and improved version of that called the Continental Voyager now that is just as tough. They say it's tougher. Uh, it's hard to imagine how they could make that already really tough case any tougher. But they say they've made it even tougher and even lighter weight and even slimmer profile somehow so go check one of those out if you want the most awesome tough and yet slim profile case um, but anyway hopefully this video has been helpful to somebody out there because i don't know about you but i was a little bit overwhelmed with all the different options of cases that you could choose from and uh, for me it's been a little bit of just trial and error and seeing what my buddies have and reading on the internet and just trying stuff out so there you go. See what I got? And I've kind of compared the pros and cons of them all. So, figure out what's best for you.